Hello and welcome to iQuanta. Today I'll be discussing two questions from time, speed and distance and time and work from CAT 2021 slot 2. The first question is on trains. It goes like this. Two trains A and B were moving in opposite directions, their speeds being in ratio 5 is to 3. Now, when two objects are moving in opposite direction, there are two cases. One, they are moving away from each other. Other, they are moving towards each other. That is something which we have to crack based on further information. Then it says the front end of A crossed the rear end of B for the six seconds after the front ends of the train had crossed each other. So front ends of train have crossed each other. That means they are moving towards each other. That is the only, only way they can cross the front ends. All right. Okay, so let us do one thing. First of all, we have, we have come to a conclusion that Trains are moving in opposite directions towards each other and their speeds on the ratio 5 is to 3. So we can assume their speeds to be 5k and 3k each and the relative speed will be some of these speeds because they are moving in the opposite directions. This will be actually the relative speed. Let that be S. Alright. So in the first condition what happens, the front end of A cross the rear end of B 46 seconds after the front ends of the trains had crossed each other. So if I make the trains like this, the front end is denoted by the smoke. This is train, train A and let this be train B. So what is happening? As you can see, the front ends are crossing each other. So from this point, and then what happens? Front end of train A crosses rear end of train B. Now, this is how train A would be placed now. So as you can see, from this position to this position, how much distance has train A traveled? Train A traveled. So it is basically the distance, the length of the train B. Let the length be LB. So now I can say, now I can say that speed, that is 5k plus 3k, or we can say 8k, the relative speed is equal to distance traveled, that is length of train B divided by Time, that is 4 to 6 seconds. So this is the first equation that we that is very important for us. <clears throat> All right. Then what happens? It took another 69 seconds for the rear ends of the trains to cross each other. All right. So as you can see, train A's front and train B's rear are, are already crossing each other. And then train A moves further. And the rear ends, this is the rear end of train A, rear end of train B, they are crossing each other. So, from this position to this position, train A has traveled its own distance. That means we can say the speed is equal to length of train A upon 69. We have two expressions now. Alright, as we can see, the speeds are equal, 8k. We can equate both the, both the expressions. Equating the right hand side, LB upon 46 is LA upon 69, what do we get? LA upon 69 is equal to LB upon 46. So we can say LA upon LB is equal to 69 whole upon 46. We can divide this. We get 3 is to 2. 3 is to 2 should be the ratio of length of train A to that of train B. We'll mark option 4. There's one thing which should be kept in mind in this question. As you can see, this step was redundant. We do not require this step at all. Why? Because as you can see, speeds are same. So <clears throat> basically we had to find the length of the distances of the, uh, the ratio of the length of the train. All right. And length is basically distance, nothing else. So, and time was already given. Moreover, they're the same train. So in both the conditions, be it the first condition, this or be it the second condition, the speed is constant. The speed is not changing at all. When speed is constant, distance and time are inversely proportional. That is how we can solve this question without giving, giving it a, any, any kind of thought. So <clears throat> what I said, because speed is constant, the second approach, a quick approach, uh, because the speed is constant, so the distance and time will be directly proportional. So length of train A to the ratio, ratio of le train, length of the trains, would actually be equal to the times taken. All right. So <clears throat> as we can see, for the train when it was traveling its own distance, that in the second case, it took 69 seconds. And when it's traveling 
बीस डिस्टेंस इन द फर्स्ट केस देन इट वॉज देन इट वॉज फोर्टी सिक्स सो डायरेक्टली वी कुड हैव सॉल्व दिस क्वेश्चन थ्री इज टू टू सो दैट इज द शॉर्टकट टेक्निक ओवर हियर वेल आई वुड रेड दिस क्वेश्चन एज मॉडरेट लेवल द टाइम टेक इन टू टाइम आइडल टाइम टेक इन टू सॉल्व दिस क्वेश्चन इज सिक्सटी सेकेंड्स इफ वी गो बाई द फर्स्ट अप्रोच बट बाई द सेकेंड अप्रोच वी कैन सॉल्व इट इन टेन सेकेंड सो दैट इज वॉट द मैजिक ऑफ रेशियोज is and you can really solve questions quickly of course after reading it second question two pipes a and b are attached to an empty water tank <clears throat> so i'll give you you know a very important uh, insight any kind of arithmetic question tst or time and work we should actually start visualizing the diagrams like in the last case i drew the uh, trains here i'm drawing the tank and the pipe so this is something which you can draw in your mind also if not you always have the pen and paper so pipe a is basically the pouring pipe let this be pipe a and pipe b is the emptying pipe let this be pipe b now what is happening pipe a is pouring and pipe b is draining so let us assume that for every hour every hour pipe a pours a units of liquid fluid and pipe b drains out b units of fluid so <clears throat> all right this is something which should be drawn in mind we have done that now our life becomes very easy how if you look at this if pipe a is opened at 2 pm and pipe b is opened at 3 pm the tank becomes full at 10 pm now we can actually find the capacity of the tank capacity of the tank how do we find it as we know that from 2 to 10 pm pipe a is functioning that means it has functioned for 8 hours that means 8a would be the amount of liquid poured in and <coughs> pipe b is functioning from 3 to 10 that is for 7 hours so 7b will be the amount of liquid drained out so 8a minus 7b would actually be the capacity of the tank from the first condition the second condition instead if pipe a is open at 2 pm and pipe b is uh, open at 4 pm then the tank becomes full at 6 pm that means the second case pipe a is open from 2 to 6 that is 4 hours 4a will be poured in and pipe b is open from 4 to 6 that is 2 hours 2b will be drained out so capacity of tank can be can be represented by these two equations and of course we can equate that all right so let us uh, write 8a Minus seven b is equal to four a minus two b, and if we solve it, we'll get four a is equal to five b. All right. Question talks about if pipe b is not open at all, that means pipe b doesn't exist at all. Then the time in minutes taken to fill the tank will be what? All right. So we want we want only a to be functioning. So let us let us uh, represent b in terms of a. We'll get b is equal to four a by five. once we have got this we'll do the main calculation so <clears throat> if the capacity of tank is divided by the efficiency of pipe a we'll get our answer capacity of tank i can use either of the expressions this or this let us use the first one so 8a minus 7b upon a should be our answer capacity of tank divided by the efficiency of pipe a let us put the value of b in terms of a what do we get now okay we'll get we'll get 8a Minus seven times four a by five. That is twenty-eight a by five whole upon a. As you can see, a can be taken common and it can be cancelled. Eight minus twenty-eight by five. If you solve this, you will get twelve upon five hours. It's twelve upon five hours. The question talks about minutes. So one hour contains sixty minutes. That is a common knowledge. Twelve upon five. If I multiply it by sixty, I'll get the answer in minutes. That is one hundred forty-four. We'll mark option three, and that is how we can solve this question just by a bit of calculation. I would rate this question as moderate level, and time taken to solve this question should not be more than sixty seconds. In both the questions, the main point that you should learn is try to imagine because that will take you places. Thanks.